The Roman legions had come again in 43 AD, but the Celtic tribes of the islands resisted them for nearly half a century. Britann became Britain, and there followed 300 years of Pax Britannica, the Peace of Rome. Barracks, cities and villas were built, and roads were carved out of the forests. The Emperor Hadrian built a wall in the mountains of the north to hold back the remnants of Pritan. Churchill in his history says, By the end of the third century, Rome seemed as powerful and stable as ever, but below the surface, the foundations were cracking. About the year 400 AD, the Roman Empire had grown too large, and the dispirited Romans now left in Britain were no match for the barbarian hordes which swept across Europe and into the island province. In his crumbling palace at York, the imperial deputy Claudius, at odds with the fading pride of his Roman past, and helpless before the brutality of the Anglo-Saxon onslaught, is at a loss to decide how best to preserve the dying glory of Rome. Great goddess Minerva, to whose glory I dedicated this temple, divine imperial family of Rome, whose holy heritage has welcomed more than a thousand springs, let me proclaim once more my faith and my intent. In this realm there is but one choice, order or chaos. This limb of Rome, Britannia, shall not be sacrificed to the ambitious lusts of savages. We have given these island people our holy Roman law We've given them order and self-respect, fine towns and straight roads. We have given them our skills. And that purpose, harmony and unity, which we rightly call civilization, shall the invading savage now destroy all we have created. Augustus, father of our great nation, divinity, give your counsel the strength to resist confusion and quell doubt. I pledge that while I live, these aging muscles remain flexed to drive out chaos. Ward off the night. Julia, 
and faithful. Claudius Cogidumnus, Imperial Deputy, Governor of York, ex-commander of an undefeated legion, wake once more to echoing terrors. Am I worthy of Julius' fidelity? Or of my son's respect? Was I wise to marry again? A Roman lady, still young and fired by youth's urgencies. How much I must conceal. A new dawn for York, for me, dusk continues. <laughs> Lucky man that I am this day. The divine spirits may grant me a son. Oh, fortunate Rufus. But for my lord's kind heart, I too would be toiling away like those dumb brutes. And soon I shall have more. My freedom. No slack in there. Stop the fires. Here, you. Old man, come here. Come here. Why do you work without zeal or joy, eh? As if you had no knowledge of your honour. Look, these vents and pipes and funnels. Can't your mind admit your privilege? Have you no thought of where they lead to? Look, there's one fire. Yes. The furnace you are stoking provides the heat and comfort for our high masters every room. Yes, one fire stoking every floor and every corner of every floor. That science old man, that. Wisdom of our rulers. No wonder we in Britain are the envy of the invading hordes. A thousand years of Roman enterprise at our disposal. Yeah. So, yeah. back to your work, old man. Here. And smile. We, you and me, certainly have no cause to scowl. I shall have a son. I shall. I shall have freedom to marry the mother of my children. And an oyster stall in the marketplace and trade and a slave of my own my own oyster shop Rufus et Phileas Rufus et Phileas Like it, my lord? A woman flaunts in yards of purchased curls, failing her own, she buys another girl's. <laughs> Exquisite. A new acquisition. A Veraconda birthday present from Cassius Sabinianus. Oh, how gallant. The girl is gifted. Yes, she has taken Regina's place. You've dismissed Regina. Veracunda is much prettier than Regina, more first, and as you say, my lord, much gifted. Gifts... But, uh, Regina is Rufus's daughter. Gifts which are, of course, entirely at your disposal, my lord. Oh, poor Rufus. Oh, poor Rufus's other daughters, I believe. Most... <laughs> Too many, I should imagine. ...faithful of my servants. I have an obligation... How very patrician of you. As ever, more Roman than the Romans, my lord, as befits you. I became a Roman before your mother bore you, so perhaps I may be permitted... Oh, I would not deny that, nor would I try to 
diminish you, my lord. But to a Roman born, merely to be Romanized can never be enough. <laughs> yes, I know. Mm -hmm. Regina will not lose by our domestic rearrangements. There is to be some auctioning of slaves today. All the same, I will have to speak with Rufus. As my lord pleases. Mm -hmm. One other matter. Do you consider it appropriate that Flavius should seek no other company than that insolent monk? Viventius. He is my <laughs> son's tutor. Arrogance posing as humility, a typical Christian. Oh, our emperor himself is now a Christian, oh, my dear. Passing fashion, surely, or political expediency. Oh, it's not for me to decry political expediency. Were it not for that emperor whose name I proudly bear, requiring a Roman victory, this island would still be a land of painted savages. I would not presume to argue such matters with my lord. I thought the monk's tales amused you, Julia. Uh, almost as much as your frequent visits to the theater. Girl, a mirror here. But uh, are the monk's entertainments suitable schooling for the governor's heir? No, this strand here, a little more to the left. However, Flavius is your son, not mine. All the same, I am much moved by your concern, my dear. And I by yours, my lord. Veracunda, do play another tune, but a less melancholy one. Bring a sparkle to your master's eyes. If I found rumor confirmed that she betrays me with a mere actor, could I kill her? Son. No, go. Today. Our master must not wait. Aye, but a son. Oh, yes, if the mountain spirits will it. Oh, oh. The pain. <sighs> Re Regina will help. Why, Regina? Why are you not attending the Lady Julia, daughter? All say you are a fool, Viventius. All of them. They say you should be among the players in the theatre who are paid well to make us laugh. You do not laugh, Flavius. Because I have been tutored, Viventius. But common people have simple minds. They wish to believe in gods born of fire, of goddesses rising from a raging sea. Well, one day your task will be to tutor others. Wrong. My task will be to command, to restore what he... My father allows day after day to rot and crumble. You teach me doubt when I should learn authority. Flavius, like any father, Claudius wants his son to be a mirror of himself. Wise, compassionate, open to conflicting arguments. A flattering mirror. So that when the time comes for you, his heir, to assume responsibility... Heir to what? Responsibility? This mouldering province is life's achievement. Bitterness, my young friend, is, as you know, a pose. Rubbish. It's youth's way of leaving important questions unasked, important tasks undone. Shall we go on? Very well. <sighs> it hath been said... But let us not waste more time on these idle speculations of your faith, Leventius. A god born of a virgin. <laughs> your book asks too much of the mob. Gods may create virgins. But virgins who give birth to gods. Your task, Viventius, is hopeless. Admit it. Quite right. I mean, to say, I mean, we do all the work, you know. The ordinary people. Begging your pardon, Felicio. The working people. <laughs> My dear Apilicus, if you imagine that actors aren't working people, then you try entertaining this uncouth mob up here. <laughs> right. But like I say, 
Who reaps the benefit of all this work? Them. Know what I mean? And looking down at us while they're... Well, exploiting us. There's no other word for it. Exploitation. Definitely. Now, take taxation. You've got your land taxes, your poll taxes, half a dozen other taxes. You name them, they'll levy them. And why? Because, as far as they're concerned, we are still a conquered people, no, right? Not too much off the top, Epilochus, as a good fellow. Yes. Now, look at all these minerals they want us to dig up out of the earth. Did you say something? No, uh, not too much off the top, Epilochus. These minerals they want us to dig up out of the ground. For what? So they can ship them back to enrich Rome. Take your farmer. Now, I come from the south. You can't tell me anything about farming. Your farmer... He was a lot better off before the first Roman soldier ever set foot on this island, right? Your farmer, in the old days, all he had to worry about was the odd invader. Your jutes and your pits and such like. Now it's the taxman, the deserter on the rampage, whatever you. Oh, I don't know. Do no, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a fact for this year. Now take the governor himself. Uh, I prefer to take his lady. <laughs> and frequently at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're talking. <laughs> Governor's lady. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, though. You can't deny it, Felicio. The governor, he doesn't give a cuss about people like us. Local people. The real people of this island, I mean. Not your lardy da Romanized civil servant and tax collector. No, no. What he's over here for, the governor, is to keep the army up to full strength, right? Sense to reason, doesn't it? Mm, well, it's his uh, job. I've heard it rumoured in, uh, yeah. in high places that the Saxons have entrenched themselves on the coastal towns and that the Picts have breached the wall in a dozen different places this year. The wall? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't talk to me about the bloody wall. <laughs> Crumbling masonry and souvenir shops. Have you seen it? I've been there. A national disgrace. <coughs> and as for these so-called invaders they talk about, well, we've heard all that before, haven't we, eh? Barbarians and savages looting, murdering, raping all the women, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, yes. If they want us to go on coughing up these taxes, they've got to keep these atrocity stories going, haven't they? Well, that's colonialism for you. You mark my words, if they can't make this province pay, they'll be out of Britannia quick as a flash. Right. And meanwhile, it's mosaics and murals and central eating and bathrooms for the rich, isn't it? And the rest of us can fight over the leavings. No, 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 for this is The fact is, they don't know what to do with this country anymore. Not anymore. They've been stuck in Britannia for 300 years now and they haven't a notion what to do with it. No idea. No idea at all. Why does oh, the man, Emperor continue to say nothing? What, what are we supposed what, what? Rome has decided. I have today received this message from the Emperor. The Senate is sending no more troops. It seems Britannia is expendable. The military situation is not beyond hope. No. In that case, with respect, one should like to hear the commander explain his recent run of disasters. My disasters? If the Legatus Lyricus sees reason to criticize my command... As procurator of this province, I prefer to listen to Cassius Sabinianus, and so should you, Justinianus, with respect. I stand corrected. Thank you. This, then, is the military position as I see it. Item one. For the moment, York stands secure within its walls. On that, I stake my reputation. Hmm. As York is still supposed to be the military center of the entire province, that is hardly the most real. Item two. Our flanks, here and there, are being harassed by Saxon sea raids. Our navy... And by the treachery of the Arcani, whom you chose to deploy as the wall's main garrison. So far, so bad. Our navy has done much to contain the advance of the Saxons. Who are still rowing in strength across the North Sea, plundering, looting and murdering from the moment they land. A seasonal hazard, surely. When was it otherwise? We are regrouping for counterattacks wherever possible. But as I have always made perfectly clear, we are engaged on too many fronts. Worse than that, Tiberius Claudius, my depleted legions have been obliged to fill the ranks with recruits from Northern Europe. Unreliable, corrupt, 
and primitive. And themselves barbarians. Hardly the best method, I should have thought, to sustain our credibility as defenders of civilized values. In the absence of concrete tokens of help from Rome, my lord. Oh, I suppose that Valentinian will eventually send another count to, uh, what is the imperial expression, restore order. Oh, he'll repair the wall in a few places, launch a couple of offensives, erect a few quite useless towers, and eventually return to Rome in time. To be rewarded with a gold medal and a new villa, quite. <laughs> I am not a military man, my lord. Merely a manner of finance. But I must now ask myself in all sincerity, why doesn't the Emperor tell us the truth? Why does he go on hiding behind the Senate? It is he, the Emperor, who is responsible for the province, surely. So why doesn't he tell us, quite simply, your godforsaken island province is defenseless? We no longer wish to protect Britannia. Uh, let the Picts and the Saxons have it. We could tell the people we've enjoyed civilization, but it appears you are not prepared to defend it. Very well, see how you like slaving for the savages of Saxony and Gaul. For whom there is no capturing, no selling, nor any kind of traffic usual in war. From whom there is nothing but killing. I saw Dross gibbet off. I too have read my Tacitus, my dear Cassius. My lord! Why do you stand there and say nothing? What is to be done? of Britannia is neither a military nor, in essence, a political problem. But one of economics, as I tried to explain. Yes, of money, Valerius, of <clears throat> money. Rome has made it perfectly clear this province can no longer be considered a profit-making enterprise. Precisely. In order to be self-supporting and to pay for adequate defenses, we must export more goods abroad. Well. What do you suggest? British dogs? <laughs> Wool? Oysters? <laughs> we must ask the people to work harder, my lord, to offset the massive imports of luxury goods. Is it keeping the villa-owning class happy? Yes, well, the people aren't likely to be impressed by such arguments. Anyway, the emperor has problems of wider implication than our little local difficulties. What do you mean? In order to survive, the empire has to expand. If it doesn't, the whole Roman economy becomes stagnant. Yes, I, I agree. So why in heaven's name doesn't he help us to defend ourselves? We can't afford it, Valerius. More men means more money, and more money means more inflation. Sixty years ago, a pound of gold was worth, well, 50,000 denarii. What's it worth today? Oh, 30 million denarii, well, I believe. There you have it. It's not the savages from Scotland and Jutland that will bring this country to its knees, Valerius. It's inflation, which lowers our defensive shield, brings about envy, discontent, mm. declining energies, eventually panic. Mm. Well, panic makes ordinary people throw themselves into the ready arms of primitive men with primitive solutions. Ah. Wisely spoken, Tiberius Claudius. But what in the name of Jupiter do we tell the people? <laughs> well, they don't want a history lesson or a dissertation on economics, that's for sure. They want what they've always wanted. Pomp and optimism, simple military solution, rivers of blood, and promises of plenty the day after tomorrow. One thing the people must never be told for their own good, my lord. That the more clearly good leaders see the complexity of the problem, the less likelihood there is of their finding a solution.
cried before he died. One little cry. It was not a son. There's no need to grieve, Placida. They have taken our Regina. The agents have taken her. I tried to speak with our master, but the spirits were not pleased. They had to find a woman for the Imperial messenger. My master had had bad news. They say in the old days our masters kept us in chains with iron bands around our wrists and ankles. They're no longer whippers. Lazy slaves should be whipped. It's only right. By step, our people have been led by their Roman masters to practices which dispose to vice. <laughs> the lounge, the bath, the elegant banquet. The elegant banquet. Elegant banquet. Hmm. All this in ignorance we call civilization, when it's only symbols of our servitude. Symbols of our servitude. Heaven only knows why they want to revive this rubbish. Don't they realize that nothing dates as quickly as satire? I ask you, has there ever been so rich a crop of vices? When has the purse of greed yawned wider? When was gambling more frantic than it is today? Eh? Is it not plain lunacy to lose 10,000 at the turn of a dice? Yet grudge a, a shirt to your, uh, to your shivering slave. To your shivering slave. Which of your grandfathers would have built himself so many country houses or dined off seven courses, eh? Oh, yes. The upper ten are scrounging with the rest. The praetor first, and then the tribune, and we look on. And still, it is wealth not God, which compels our deepest reverence. I really have to get this stuff rewritten. I've played York before. I'll die the death. I remember now! Wodan! Warrior of this land! Not slave! Lord of this land! <laughs> you have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man shall take thee to the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go with him a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that ask of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. A private matter, my lord. If it be your pleasure, may I now speak with you? Give uh, the Ventius some wine, Rufus, and uh, water it well. <laughs> <laughs> and you, my lord Tiberius Claudius, actually give credence to such subversive provocation? Oh, but charming provocation, surely. The monk's tales would seem to amuse our lord. I find them boring and repetitive. I dare say one must keep up with the times. Well, I must confess I find the tales of beauty, grace and symmetry. But they don't even rhyme, my lord. <laughs> what would your 
soldiers make of these fanciful stories, Cassius Sabinianus, hmm? <laughs> they would regard them for what they are. A license for disobedience, immorality, and cowardice. Uh, forgive me, Viventius, but I cannot believe that slaves and soldiers will ever lend their ears to exhortations to desert, <laughs> for that surely is what your tale has amounted to. Well said, young Flavius. For 60 years or more, ever since Constantine was converted, the words of the disciples of that pretentious rabbi have weakened all resolve in Rome. Oh, come now. Rome is surely strong enough to withstand the assault of words from a clownish monk or two. <laughs> Rufus, more wine. And let us not forget, our marauding enemies are rivals for Britannia's spoils. They may well slaughter one another before they menace us. Rome will survive. My lord agrees. Of course, Cassius. Of course. Do you, Viventius? All empires must end in dust and desolation to be succeeded by others. Yes. All else is vanity. Indeed. Then who will rule the world after Rome? Picts? Saxons? Christians? <laughs> oh, what a delightful prospect. How can worth spinning and merely mouth good intentions ever hope to conquer an empire such as Rome? Uh, we do not aim to conquer. No. Merely to seduce and in turn reduce. Whatever one's personal beliefs, a country must have law and order and we have given these to the world. We found a savage island and gave it civilization. And even freedom of religious expression, Justinianus. Oh, a terrible burden for ordinary people. <laughs> a license for doubt and confusion. Quite. Some of your officers still worship at the shrine of your slaves Midrash. still put their faith in the supernatural powers of pigs and snakes. Oh, ah, common okay. folk is concerned one superstition will do as well as another. As long as the result is obedience to authority. Exactly. Ar argue with that, Viventius. Gladly. Man's only true law is reason. To fulfill one's obligations. To deter others from doing wrong. The validity of reason is immutable and eternal. Let's be free! Ah, yes. The same poetic whimsy by which the crucified carpenter managed to delude a few Hebrews. Free! Free! What is going on out there? We are at lunch. Forgive me, Cassius Sabinianus. I wasn't recalling the words of Jesus Christ, but those of Cicero, a Roman politician. Yes, and we all know what happened to him. <laughs> the fact that Cicero was put to death wouldn't necessarily invalidate his argument. What is it, Rufus? My lord, they brought a prisoner. Prisoner? Here? A wounded Saxon chieftain, my lord. Ooh, barbarians for dessert. There stands our enemy. If Rome could see this savage in our midst, they'd send us 10,000 men. I've lost my appetite. Shall I turn the other cheek to him too, Viventius? My lord has said, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, oh, and pray for them which monk. despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may join your father which is in heaven. Stinks to high heaven. <laughs> Is this to be your heritage, Britannia? Really, don't tell us that's the best you can do. I can vouch for each of them personally. Medically examined every one of them myself. Yes, well, I've heard all that before. Let's look at their hands for a start. Come on, hands. What a place to do business. I can scarcely hear myself think. Oh, well, at least it's warm. 
Anyway, we're almost finished, aren't we? Well, I don't know. The men, just about passable, but the women, I'll have a job disposing of them. There's not one of them over 30. It's all in the documents. Well, the rates you're extorting, I may have to cancel the whole thing. The price is rock bottom, and well, you know it. I shall lose my license if I can't give them away. Oh, lovely bracelet you're wearing, by the way, dear. Mm. It's Persian. Really? It's a genuine antique. Look, we're wasting time. At this rate, we're going to miss the main part of the games. You halve the price. And we're in business. Oh. But the Saxon chieftain is in your power, my lord. Must he be killed? Viventius. His warriors have plundered and looted, murdered innocent women and children, decimated our soldiers. The people demand action. Blood for blood. If you simply seek revenge, Tiberius Claudius, you'll derive no honour from the transaction. Oh. Preserve his life, and history will celebrate your clemency. History? In a thousand years' time, nobody will even recall the name of this obscure northern province. My lord, no, I can't talk to you time? now, Rufus. Later. Of course, we could exhibit the monster in a public square. A circus, my lord. To show the people that we haven't invented him. If Rome won't defend Britannia, perhaps the people themselves will summon up courage. To protect the Roman presence. To protect themselves, Viventius. It's too bad. You did agree to the prize. You agreed to the whole package. That's before I went into the figures, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, look, you see that big one over there? He's an overseer, an actual overseer. Did I charge you one denarii more for him than the rest? I did not. No, I should think not. He's well past it. Oh, anyway, who wants an overseer? I want a man that can work. <laughs> look, Vipomilus, I'm not a mean man. What I do, dear, I throw in someone for your own personal use. Fashion preparatorius herself. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with him? It's not a him. Sorry, dear. But there's nothing wrong with her. <laughs> Comes from the finest house in York. Mm -hmm. Personal servant to the first lady. <clears throat> I've had more offers for her than I can tell you. Oof. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> All right. Go. On. Toss her into the package and it's a deal. So you've got me over the barrel on this one, and well, you know it. I've done you a favour, and well, you know it. <laughs> Put it back with the others and mark her. But be gently, mind. Oh, not so hard. Oh. Oh. I no longer understand the world, Vivendius. When I first saw Rome, I was dazzled. One religion, one law, one emperor. Forgive me, my lord, but weren't your emperors often vicious and feeble-minded men, ah. elevated by chance, ruled by their own capricious passion? It was pomp and splendor and victories without end. And courts debauched by lust and cruelty. No. The Roman world I know is like a cracked mosaic. Or an old man who only wants to live in peace. And enjoy the good gifts that life has to bestow. Nothing else. Why do you ask these Christian questions that make me doubt my Roman answers? Doubt, doubt is the cancer which kills empires, Viventius. Uh, doubt and sloth. And pride. <laughs> You really are dangerous, Viventius. Here we stand, menaced by those who want to destroy us, and you encourage me to philosophize with detachment. God help my son Flavius if he listens to your master's words. It's not a fault to consult one's conscience. And to confess. Then let me say it quickly. I am less concerned with the problems of our defense and economy than I am with fears of my own 
inadequacy and dreams of retirement to sunny faraway islands. How absurd. Is it that you fear desire? Hmm. I fear the lack of it, monk. on us. The barbarian who regards Britannia as a green and golden paradise richly veined with mines. To be ravaged for profit. Wasn't that our own purpose originally? My lord, the process of taming and civilizing a province is hard. The monk advises me to spare his life. Of course! To undermine your purpose and to sap your strength, Tiberius Claudius. But I think that all men were once like that. An animal. Without imagination, without culture. Oh, not necessarily without culture. Oh? Why not ask him, then? <laughs> yes, Flavius, you're a linguist, or so I'm told. Make him speak to us. Take care, Flavius. Don't provoke him. Is there a Christian law against questioning a murderer? Merely against baiting a human being. Tell us, Saxon. What is your name? What is your purpose? Have you no reason? No gestures? Are you man or animal? <laughs> <laughs> You're an ill match to pair my son sit down. <laughs> his, na his name is Nordifida. That much our interrogators have already established. <laughs> and his purpose to destroy us. My lord, why would you not let the savage speak? Because the Saxon is not likely to supply additional information without further encouragement of fire and tongues. Oh. Well, why don't we ask him? Luco, you ask him. Ask him for me how many wives he keeps at home. The Saxons practice monogamy, my lady. Indeed. Oh, indeed. They place great store by chastity, my dear. Oh, like the Christians. Oh, more so. They punish adultery with death. Really? Then we must put his steadfastness to the test. Veracunda, approach our guest. Excellent sport. The beauty and the beast. <laughs> Better than a circus. Come, Veracunda, you are hardly without protection here. Go on. Go on, girl. Go on. Now, look at him. Now, free his hands. Good. Now, touch him. Gently. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Wait. I have an idea. Rufus. You try. He may feel more at home with you. Go on, Stroke his belly, Rufus. <laughs> Viventius, why don't you intercede? He may, in the circumstances, respond to a man of peace. I think we've had sport enough with him. Might he not respond to your poetic talks, Viventius? I agree with Tiberius Claudius. What's the point of playing games of cat and mouse with this prisoner? Because the power of his presence can deceive Monk. Because I... he appears to acknowledge our superiority. By the dignity of his silence. Very well, then. 
I shall leave the Saxon to the mercy of your arguments, gentlemen. I'm late for the theatre as it is. Hasn't there been theatre enough for you here, my dear? <clears throat> Flavius, will you accompany me? Flavius. I shall stay. Then, if I may be permitted, I'm content to have the barbarian's fate decided by my betters. Good night, my lord. <clears throat> Rufus, come. Serve this more wine. What's the matter, man? Whilst our legions stand firm, no harm will come to you and these Saxons or to your family. My lord, your servant's ill temper hardly becomes him. Do send for another so that we may conclude this meal in peace. Rufus, come here. Stand before me. To celebrate this day's victory, the capture of this chieftain, I now offer you what you were once promised upon my death, your liberty. Marry a woman. Be a free man. What say you to that, Viventius? I commend your generosity, my lord, and wisdom. Since there can be no liberty without strength, I offer you this sword of Rome. Use it well. Ventius, my father has you to thank for this. This is how slaves and savages will always interpret tenderness as weakness, abject surrender. Slaves and savages, And yes. priests! Wild beasts are not more cruel than your Christians when they defend their faith. Your father's suffering. Flavius, make sure they found the Lady Julia. I'll stay with him. Yes, priest. Stay and comfort my father with tales of faith and godly miracles. <laughs> Civilization will prevail. Ah, it's might that will prevail. Man's kingdom is not for the gentle and meek, my friend. Man 
as a killer ape. Rome has achieved much. Uh, much ritual, terror, superstition. Well, what of justice, art, oh. tolerance? Yes. And actors, mask and costume, nothing more. You've lost much blood, Tiberius Claudius. And with it, faith. Faith in man, yes. Ye heavens, what in the centuries to come will you and he make of this poor, fettered island? I and who, my lord? You and that Saxon chieftain. Commander, prince and savage. Go. Woo him with tales of peace and life eternal. Go. Build your vain dreams together. <laughs> 